This episode has Ringo Starr in it. The Simpsons has a reputation for celebrities overshadowing entire episodes. Are these two facts related? Hi, I'm Torin, and welcome to Torin Loves the Simpsons. Today we're looking at Season 2, Episode 18, Brush with Greatness. An episode where Homer takes us to Mount Splashmore, where he gets stuck in a water slide, prompting him to lose weight. While searching for his exercise equipment, he uncovers Marge's old paintings from when she was in high school, and when Lisa prods Marge to reignite her passion for art, Marge wins an award, catching the eye of Mr. Burns in his search for an artist to paint his portrait for a soon upcoming unveiling. Failing. And with the help of Sir Richard Starkey himself, she produces a painting Mr. Burns doesn't hate. Wow, that's a dense plot and I am super here for it. Let's dive on in. As always, we're starting with the humor, and oh my, does this episode come right out of the gates with a banger. I love everything about Mount Splashmore, from Krusty's shameless promotion, to how well it works on Bart and Lisa, to the way both Homer and Bart and Lisa independently decide to find a way to skip the line. But in particular, I have to name the Will You Take Us to Mount Splashmore gag as a definite certified S-tier moment. Because even though I know it's coming and I know every moment of it already, I am cracking up the whole time every time I watch it. It is incredible and honestly one of my favorite moments in the entire series. I think part of what I enjoy about it is seeing Bart and Lisa so in sync with each other, especially immediately after them both openly acknowledging that they're motivated by such a cheap ad. And this episode knows how to let the humor take a back seat to allow for plot development time, while still keeping minor jokes and gags going enough to keep interest up for those just looking for a laugh. Although even if you are just looking for a laugh, we'll, we'll get to it. I think Professor Lombardo brings a lot to the table. He's so over the top in his delivery. This isn't the first time John Lovitz has voiced a character, but I wish it were because I think this episode is much more deserving of his talents. He voiced Artie Ziff in The Way We Was. But here, with Professor Lombardo, he provides just the right touch of wackiness to keep the humor engaged throughout the body of the episode, in addition to the key role he plays in moving the plot along. I love every moment of dialogue from him. And this is, of course, all to carry us to the other major humor moment of the episode, which is the moment we've all been waiting for, the Ringo Starr scene. Or rather, two scenes, but the first one is a setup scene that's critical in making the latter scene the absolute masterpiece it is, because it's another certified S-tier moment. I tried not to. I wanted to come into this review and say, yeah, it's good, but is it that great? Or even, it might be S tier, but I'm not sure. But it wins me over every time. I love everything about it, from Ringo's delightful vocal delivery, to the expression on his face as Weatherby hangs the portrait, to the P.S. forgive the lateness of my reply, one of my favorite quotes ever which I use in real life quite regularly because I'm awful about responding to text messages. I especially love how his delivery changes between the two times he says, P.S. forgive the lateness of my reply. It feels like the second time he's clearly repeating it as if he's referencing that he's already said it in this episode. And I don't know why, but that just seems so adorable to me. I simply cannot overstate how much I love Ringo's contribution to this episode. But we're not done with the humor just yet, because the episode closes on a punchline, which not a whole lot of episodes do, and this one is fantastic. I am, of course, referring to the thanks for not making fun of my genitalia, I thought I did exchange. Just like how I said before that this episode knows how to let the humor take a backseat, it also knows how and when to use the humor for maximum effect. I've done a lot of thinking on where exactly I want to place this episode's humor. It's not the funniest episode ever, but it's way up there. I'm going with a solid S on this one. It's not quite S+, plus, but it's damn close. I had to do some serious deliberation to decide between the two. So how does the plot stand up next to the top tier humor? Well, first I want to take a quick look at what Burns and Smithers provide to the episode. And they come in strong right from the top, as their introduction at the end of Act 2 is very well-timed to provide a change from the fast pace of the entire episode leading up to it. That fast pace is great and appropriate for when they do use it, and it's just about to start to become tiring when they cut to Burns' domain and slow things down a bit. We also see some insightful development in the relationship between Burns and Smithers. 
The show hasn't really begun hinting at Smithers' romantic feelings, but Smithers clearly stands Burns, and not in the sense of how the word stan has been memefied. I mean like in the OG Eminem song sense. If you've actually listened to Stan by Eminem, you hopefully understand how fucked up the implications are. And that's exactly what I mean here. It's a rather short segment, but the moment where Marge asks Smithers about the way Burns treats him, and Smithers replies that he cherishes every moment he and Burns are together, immediately followed by Burns throwing his tea on Smithers as Smithers continues to toady as his torso is developing what I can only assume must be at least second degree scalds, that all says a lot about the character duo. Their incredibly toxic relationship is such a staple to the show, providing countless joke opportunities as well as directly influencing at least a couple classic plots. While this is by no means the first indication of Burns being abusive, this is a major moment in establishing just how bad things are between them. And one final note about Burns before we move on. I really appreciate the brief comment he makes as he and Smithers bounce on out of the Simpsons house about how if he'd stayed there any longer, he'd need half a white Valium. Culture in the United States heavily associates drug use with poor people, especially in the f***ing 1990s as the war on drugs was in full swing and being used to target the poor, particularly black and brown people. So I greatly appreciate it being depicted here that rich people do drugs too, because they do. All kinds of people do drugs. Drugs are an immeasurably complicated topic, so I won't go into it any more than to say that I appreciate this small step to try to break the illusion that drugs are a poor people thing. But okay, holy sh**, let's actually get to the main storyline. I've been talking about the plot for how long? There's just so much to discuss here. This episode doesn't feel like season two. I think it feels like a season four episode more than anything, with a plot that jumps across various plot points, from Mount Splashmore to Homer's obesity to Marge's art, and weaves them together in a way that feels like a cohesive story, while still ending in a very different place than where we started. We get a realistic and part-time down-to-earth depiction of some everyday life problems, like Homer's struggle with controlling his body weight, and Marge's trepidation with trying to pursue her artistic ambitions, which helps the story feel compelling and relatable, and that helps contrast nicely with the larger-than-life moments like Marge getting a commission for a major portrait, and Marge getting a letter reply from Ringo Starr himself praising her artistic abilities. And as for Ringo's contribution to this episode, and to answer the question I posed at the beginning of this episode, no, that question was just a bullshit YouTuber tactic to hook you in and make you watch my video. I think Ringo adds so much to this episode, while keeping his presence still quite restrained. The actual episode has a lot to offer outside Ringo's contribution, with the main focus always being on the family, Marge specifically at this point in the story, as the episode features major input from all the members of the Simpsons household between the ages of 8 and 80. As I mentioned a minute ago, Ringo's reply letter is a larger than life moment, and it's timed and integrated into the plot seamlessly without making it an episode about Ringo Starr. That, I think, is a major criticism of a lot of later episodes when it comes to celebrity appearances. They can feel like, insert celebrity, is the joke, or is the episode. Not to spoil a review I'm not even on track to get to for like a decade, but that's how I feel about season 14's How I Spent My Strummer Vacation, where most of Acts 2 and 3 is spent showcasing various rock stars and it's neither funny nor interesting. This episode uses a few brief moments of Ringo to help push along a plot that's already compelling without him. And that, I think, is the difference. This isn't the first case of a celebrity portraying themselves. That honor goes to Tony Bennett in Dance and Homer, and if you count Larry King's off-screen appearance in One Fish, Two Fish, and so on, then this isn't the second either. But this is the first time it's actually been more than just a brief one-scene cameo, where a celebrity actually had some kind of meaningful interaction with the characters and or plot, and it sets a great example. I'm really not sure what to rate this plot. Since I gotta pick something, I'm going with S, but yet again I'm strongly debating if it's worthy of S+. Plus. If you're watching this a while after this video came out, maybe check the comments section on this video to see if I've pinned a retraction bumping this plot up to an S+, plus after comparison with other S+, plus episodes. I wonder if there's an episode coming up that sets the standard for what a top-tier plot can be. 
Anywho, now for the final rating. We have an S for humor and an S for plot, both of them borderline S+. Plus. I gotta keep the theme going and call this a borderline S+, plus and give it an S. Seriously though, while I've already given some ratings I kinda regret in retrospect, this is a review I have a strong feeling I'm going to revise in the future, so check out the comment section for a possible pinned comment from me someday. This is my favorite episode of the show so far. I wonder how long it'll get to retain that title. I'm not foreshadowing anything at all. Anyways, thanks for watching! I hope you liked my video, and by that I mean I hope you enjoyed my video, but by that I also mean I hope you clicked the like button if you enjoyed my video. And if you want to join me on my journey to review every episode one by one, click that subscribe button and set that bell to all. Up next we have Lisa's Substitute, so I will see you in that video.